human. And if you are seeing this screen, I am hoping to assure you here that the live stream will start very soon. So please stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. And welcome back to this Friday afternoon stream here. Just a quick update, those of you that want to see the results of Classic Watch 2022, then go and have a look on the site yourself. Hopefully we'll get around to updating the results soon. And the, the site can be found at classicwatch2022.ml. Right, what's this broadcast all about that I'm sure you're wondering, as though the title doesn't give it away. This could be arguably the last Group 1 two-year-old pattern race weekend of the season. And luckily for us, they've put them all on the same day, which is nice, in England and, and in France. You know, and as expected, we've got plenty of two-year-olds running. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through what runners we've got tomorrow in the pattern races. Maybe I'll have a quick look at the races as well. And then we'll, we'll wrap it up and crack on with our lives. Right, the first, first race we're going to take a look at is at San Clou. It's ran at 1.33 p.m. tomorrow. And as you'll see, it's the Criterium de San Clou, Group 1. Proper race this, over one mile and two furlongs. You know, this is a good race. We've had the winner of this race the other year with uh, Van Gogh. And it might also have been the race that El Bodigon won for us last year. I know he won one of these races that we're going to talk about in a minute. Right, this is only nine runners on heavy ground. You'll see here that the top one is, is one of ours already, as is the second one. Third one we've, we've passed on. And we've also got another runner there in Adelaide River. You know, Covent Garden. Well, it's got a bit to find on the figures, hasn't it? Yeah, a few of them have, really. They're looking at horses like Dubai Mile, 107 rated. You know, Adelaide Rivers went from three. And we've got a chance here, looking at the figures and the pedigree of our horses. And the Darwi there needs probably the, the dangerous one. You know, at this race, looking at it, on his last two races by a head and a neck. He's not raced above 93, you know. Nadawi, you'll see his form there and his pedigree by Cracksman out of Mount Elbrus. You know, it's an interesting horse. I do like the horse, but is it a Group 1 horse? We'll find out. I do think it will stay the trip and it must have some sort of a chance of doing himself justice at least. This race is interesting because as far as I, I think it'll be, we've got what we've got here. He's a son of Cracksman. Yeah, going for his for the sire's first grade one victory. Nadawi. Have we have we identified Cracksman's first group one winner? Time will tell. The second of ours in the race, <coughs> excuse me, is Dubai Mile. Again by the late Stallion, who only sadly sighed one crop. Roaring Lion, out of a mare called Beach Bunny. Again, ran a, ran a cracking race, it has to be said. Behind one of ours, the Foxes. Last time out at grade two level. These extra ten, two furlongs again. We think it's an interesting entry, this is definitely, very much so. I do feel that. Uh... Have we identified Roaring Lions, first two-year-old winner? You know, time will tell. Can they both dead heat? And we identified Dubai Mile, a Cracksman, and Roaring Lions, first Group 1 winner, in the same race. Yeah, that would be truly remarkable outcome, that would. The third runner we've got in this race has been disappointing for me. i said it a couple of times because if people look at the form of it, it's been beaten twice at very short odds. You know, very, very risky horse. The very well bred, nonetheless. Adelaide River. You know, again, another one I'm certain as we get, you know, we're identifying classic horses, Derby and Oaks. You know, one mile, two furlong, group one. Looks nice on the CV at two. 
for a middle distance prospect. Adelaide River, I'm sure. Well, you never know. If it wins tomorrow, I'll be furious. Put it that way. Furious and pleased at the same time. You know, because I've, it's one of them that I was hoping that would just win a few. Let's hope he's saving his wins for tomorrow and for, and as a three-year-old and when the classics actually start. But I do think he is a very nice horse. Adelaide River. Right, and then you see the race again. You know, with our three against them, uh, it's impossible for me not to feel confident about the outcome of this race. We'll certainly find out whether three of ours are good enough. You know, Judd Mont will Judd Mont thwart us again? They've thwarted us a few times this year with Chow Neen. You know, will they do it again? That one I'm reluctant to follow because I don't like the sire Zophany. So that would probably be a terrible result for that to win for me. The others, well, they look to be are what they are. Covent Garden, I had a brief look at it, but three three times to get off the mark, but it does look one that is certain to stay. They are Saxon Warrior in there as well from Jim Bolger. I mean, it's fairly exposed, but it's an interesting sire, Saxon Warrior. Yeah, it's side that other, the other horse that's won a couple of group listed races in France. It's just got the deep impact line. Just waiting for the right dams for it. Saxon Warrior. Really. Right. On to the next race of the day. Group 1 action we're going to take a look at is back in England at Doncaster. For the one mile Vertem Futurity Trophy. Again, they're racing for no money at all here. 118,000. Compared to in France, 120,000. You see, paltry prize money for Group 1 races at the weekend by the looks of things here. So it's really all about the prestige of having a Group 1 winner. They're certainly not racing for the prize money. If they were, they'd be racing somewhere else. Um, we've got here Epiquetus, looks the main danger to ours. August Rodan, beautifully bred horse by Deep Impact out of Rhododendron. It's a tough race. We've got Stormbuster in there. It's been beaten by one of ours, Flying Honor. Flying Honors. We've got this one here, these two here, Holloway Boy and Epiquetus. They've both been beaten in the same race by one of ours, Silver Knot. There's clues are plenty here, it's fair to say. Got the 15th from the Convivial Maiden running in there behind our Desert Order. One and a half lengths behind a group one winner there on debut. Salt Lake City. Interesting one. King of Steel. Well, unknown really. We'll be, be, be picking that one up at a later stage if that was to win, having a look at it. But this race to me, as the prices look indicate, really. At the moment, August Rodan is the favourite. And you can see why, really. It's ran to 110. It ran well when it won the uh, Group 2 race at Leopardstown. The KPMG Juvenile race. And this, to me, looks the logical step up, really, in class. Hopefully, it will hopefully go on again, though. It's one that uh, every race it's ran, it's gone off the favourite. It's going to be very short again tomorrow. So it's one, really, that we might just be sitting back and enjoying as it runs through the classics rather than... But it is a beautifully bred horse and it's running up to its pedigree, which is always great to see. A tricky race, really, though, because that's the only one we've got running for us. And that's the wrong race. And it is very short. Let's just close them down to stop that happening again. And it is very short in the market. And if it drifts, it's an indicator that they don't really fancy it and then people don't want to be with it anyway. You know, it's a tough horse to play for me because... It's not two to one or above. I'm not interested, really. And that I'd advise everyone else, really, to, vo to form their own strategies. You know, because this is a very nice horse. All right. We're going to go back. We're going to go to the third group, one of the day now, which is the One Mile Criterium International, again, for peanuts at San Clue. This race looks a bit trickier for us, really, because... French pattern racing is what it is. We do look at some, but not others. You know, they are 
fan tracing is can be a bit unreliable. I do feel that. We've got a solid yardstick here running for us in Proud and Regal. You know, it really is. Been behind some nice horses. Some very nice horses indeed. And hopefully it will continue to head in the right direction. Hinted at a preference for soft ground there, I thought, on its uh, fourth run. You know, when it improved in good company in the uh, national stakes. The forecast ground could be well up the street of this horse, I think. The next race is interesting. The other French runners, Breeze Sky and Siros, the one that Sumion got banned for, for for pushing Russia Ryan off. When it was beaten by our continuous, it's for redemption tomorrow with uh, Maxime Guillon on board. We've got a, a Salt Bay, an unbeaten horse, Espionage. Kubrick, I think, can be dangerous. Yeah, that could be a good horse. You know, I don't, if it wins tomorrow, we might have beaten one of ours already. Adelaide River, it's beaten. See who else who runs tomorrow. If it was to turn, if it was to land this way, we might have to latch on to this one. You know, because I think if people have a quick glance at even the first dam of it and the second dam of it, you'll see that it is in there. You see, it's a, it's a half brother to US Group One winner, Raging Bull. You know, this is a dangerous one, Kubrick. We're not with it yet. Because if you go to the second dam, you see, there's not a lot. The third dam, and then we will stop. Because the racing post really isn't the best guide. So look at these, you see, you know, the second dam was weighted 100 there. That tells us, is that a complete form? We don't know at this stage, looking at the racing post. You know, and then we'd have to dive on the other side to see if it's worth following. It's not a bad horse, Kubrick. The form of it's good. You know, dangerous connections they are. They don't like to lose. Yeah, so we're a bit worried. I'm a bit worried about that one. Proud and Regal. I'm sure we give a good run in. I'm sure we will. And hopefully he'll be good enough on the day. You see his form's been solid. You know what we're getting here, Galileo. Out of Simply Perfect. You know, we can, you can't set your watch by these, but as you can see, it's been, it's never raced out of pack company apart from when it won its maiden. And then it's been in group three when it won, group two, when it was a bit outpaced that day, behind Aesop's Fables, who scooted away from him on that day. And then a decent enough run at the cover. You know, so we're going to take our chances with that one, surely. Hopefully the prices will be fair for everybody to have a little, little look at the horse. Right, and then we've got a couple more in the, the non-Group 1 races. We're going to start with the Horace Hill. <coughs> Excuse me. Striking Star is one we've only recently identified. You see, it's only one. It's maiden in the middle of September. But it is a nicely bred horse. You know, but it's an interesting race. There's probably some very nice horses in here that will deserve the utmost respect if they were to go on and win a race of this nature. You know, but we're going to side with ours as we always do at this stage until proven otherwise. You know, but you're looking at horses there. There's an unbeaten one there, look, by Caravaggio that's only lost a race. A Lope de Vega, Bally Lynch, homebred by Varian, home trained by Roger Varian. Uh, we, really, we really will have to look at. Again, if that wins, Med Mass hasn't really been a classic sire as of yet. You know, even that one looks got a nice profile. My first season sire. So there is interest. They've all run to a higher mark than ours as well. Ours has only raced to 88. Look, it's miles behind Gray's Monument on the figures. You know, so Gray's Monument, although being more exposed, seems sure to give them all a race because there's nothing else rated above 100 in the race. I mean, if Gray's Monument was to win, everyone would look around and go, how the fuck did everyone not pick that? You know, but it is one of them. Striking star, you'll see, as we said. By Dubawi out of Aging Bolger train mare Lucida. You know, so she was a nice filly. I think she was classic placed or classic fourth group two winner. And uh, I'm hoping to learn more about this one tomorrow. The next one, Hiawatha, really is, is on could be could be in the last chance saloon here. If he doesn't do anything in the group three airfield stakes at Leopardstown. You know, you, see, you look at his form, you see, he's not really even in the, towards the head of the market. You'll see, 
he took a while to get off the mark and then he was well beaten in a sales way I mean as if these people don't need the money you know and uh, he's got it all to prove really now on his first chance at Patton Company he could have argued that really that run was not necessary at all and uh, <laughs> hopefully hasn't, hasn't done the horse too much damage Gulf of Mexico is one I don't think I've looked at yet <coughs> but it's uh, one at Killarney it's third start you know looking at these races in group threes we can always pick these up for the classics if they show us some it you know we don't want to be following too many two year olds not 50 you know we've got to let some of them go round without we've got to let some prove, and prove they're good enough to us before we follow them I hope Hippodrome is a classic example of that you see that's had a run of 63 there and a maiden and it's improved no end a step up in trip of a furlong, which is a long way for a two year old, a mile one. You know, he's sure to have the rest. There's not one horse rated above 100 in this race, you see. And this is a group three, but it will suffer if you run this race, sort of race on the same day as a group one. You know, people will be tempted to go for that, won't they? You know, and it's an interesting race, I think. In Hiawatha, I come a lot out of a tyre, and I'm hoping that. This is one really that needs to start putting its best foot forward. If it was to, if it was to bomb out tomorrow, I'd be really, I'd probably be quite reluctant to move forward with it into the actual project. But it's one I can easily kick myself and bring back when it wins a trial and then loses a classic. And then we're we're sort of chasing the horse a bit, then, aren't we? That sort of horse. It's got a nice pedigree. Interesting horse. The last race of the day is a baffling entry for me. Three o'clock at Doncaster, the Marston Doncaster Stakes were for poultry £22,000 to the winners, which makes me wonder why Coolmore are racing a Group 2 winner in it, which ran to 111 with a, with, a, with a penalty. You know, Aesop's Fables has looked well held, to be fair, in his last two starts at Group 1 level. But if they've not got nothing less exposed than this by uh, for a listed race, then they could be in trouble. You know, it's, all, it's also a dubious entry for me because we're looking for us to step up in trip to a mile next season. You know, and then he's going the other way. He did win over five and a half furlongs, seven furlongs. He scooted clear. And then at the top level, his turn of foot it wasn't really noticeable at all against the group one horses over that trip of, of seven furlongs at this stage so I guess it makes sense to try it there's not many six furlong group one races left but you know, as you can see opened up evens according to these the best odds I mean it's dangerous this one really because it's not shown as much in its last two starts and it's on the drift they also run Hispanic in there the maiden winner which is the way he has to improve a lot. You know, I'll give him five pounds away. Bresson, I think, could be interested here. Because at Remarque, we're following Remarque, and that looks a good race. Bresson travelled well that day. You know, and it, uh, it ran very well. It's one I've not looked at. Oh, it's out of shutter speed, is it? That's an interesting horse. You know, because as we will see now, we've got to click on now, I've noticed that. Shutter speed, I think, won the Moosey Dora. It was a very light career, she did. It's fourth behind Senga then, and the Arcos horse in the French Oaks, what a run. And then and then six behind Ulysses. You know, this is a very promising horse. I've seen it travel with my own eyes against Remarque. It's it's one I'm not following as of yet. He says. You know, that's one there's that's one we've got to pay close attention to, I think. Tomorrow. Could be be a nice horse that and the others they look quite exposed but we're going to stick with ours we picked any six fables to move forward in with the classics it's hardly an entry that we like from a classic point of view a drop back in trip after being beaten in seven furlong group ones but you know it's fascinating to follow these horses and see how they campaign them you know could be a classic horse could it not be a classic horse however that then it's going to be on the back of that conundrum we've left the puzzle there the video's cleared absolutely nothing up 
people have been left with more questions than they have answers after watching this video for sure, which is just what just just the way we like it. If you want your answers, go somewhere else. Um, Aesop's Fables. Could have it all to do if it gets beat tomorrow, but and if it goes, if it's looking as though it's going to go sprinting, you know. And classic watch, is it a classic horse? The Dubai Cup, Commonwealth Cup horse. You know, July Cup, Commonwealth Cup. Or is it going to be a classic horse? Time will tell. But for now, thank you very much for watching this video, everybody. Some fascinating runners tomorrow. It's the time of year I really enjoy this time of the year because because it all comes to a crescendo. And hopefully, you know, we've got some well-bred horses here. And we must have some sort of a squeak in all of these races. That would be my honest assessment of all the runners. You know, we've got three in one race, though, which is a bit of a minefield. Right, enough banging on. Go back on and enjoy your lives, everybody. Thank you very much for watching, and you take care.